Okay, so this is lecture number 41 of EE 503. So this is second to the last lecture of our course. So this is our, you know, almost like the final topic. And the topic is best linear unbiased estimator. And this is known as BLUE, as an acronym, we use BLUE, best linear unbiased estimator. So let's assume that C is desired, let's say, unknown. So I don't know the value of C, but different from our earlier discussions, this is non-random, meaning that I have no idea about its distribution, I don't know anything about its mean value, variance, etc. I have no idea about its moments or distribution. Okay, so how about this? X of, let's say, K is k to observation on, let's say, C. Okay, so let me give an example. So let's say that X1 is equal to C plus N1. X2 is equal to C plus N2. Okay, now, so these are zero mean noise with, let's say, covariance matrix. I can use autocorrelation or covariance because they are zero mean and covariance matrices, let's say, Rn. Now the question is, okay, so I have two observations. Now I would like to estimate C in a linear way. So in other words, I would like to construct a linear estimator. Okay, in this form. And the question is again, the usual question. What should be the weight number one and weight number two when I calculate this linear combination so that I have a good estimate? Okay, so this is linear estimator. Obviously. Now the criteria is again mean square error. So expected value of C minus C hat parentheses square is aimed to be aimed to be minimized. Okay. But why am I saying aim to be minimized? You will see the reason. Okay. So right now we have seen the problem setting. Again, I have a linear combination of observations, a linear estimator. And we have seen the linear part. We haven't seen this unbiased part. Okay, we will explain it. Again, the criteria is mean square error. And the differences from the earlier discussions, this is non-random. Okay, that is the important difference. So what should I do? Okay, so let's start. Let's go on with this example. So let me define an error. Error is equal to C minus C hat. Okay? Or C minus W transpose times X. But X is equal to, so let me introduce an X vector over here. X vector is X1, X2. I have a vector of ones. One, one, and C plus n1, n2, and of course I will write this as vector of 1 times c plus n. Okay. Usual notation. Vector of 1s and n. Okay. So x is this thing. Vector of, we use this. Vector of 1s times c plus n. Okay. So if I process this, I have something like this. C1 minus this plus minus actually minus I have W transpose times N. Am I right? W transpose times this, W transpose 1 C. C is a scalar. This is a vector. Okay. 1 is not a vector, it's a scalar. Then minus W transpose N, 
is also the inner product, which is also a scalar. Okay. So the criteria MSCS obviously expected value of this. Okay. So then I have two terms over here. So let me write before writing that maybe also may, let's make of this. What is expected value of this error? Well, there is nothing random over here, non-random, non-random. So this is equal to C, 1 minus W transpose 1. Minus, well, expected value of this term, but N is composed of zero mean random variables. So it's just this. Okay. So do you remember if this is equal to zero, let me write it over here. We call that estimator an unbiased estimator. Okay. If the expected value of, let me write it a little better. This is unbiased. Okay. So I may denote this this part has, you know, if you wish, this is like the bias term. Bias term of this estimator of, let's say, W. Okay? But this is bias when it's a function of W and C, as you see. There is W, C. This depends on unknown C also. That is a bias term. Okay. So if this is equal to zero, this bias scalar is equal to zero, then it's an unbiased estimator. So we are approaching actually, you know, towards this unbiased definition over there. So if I take the MSC calculation, now I have to take the square of this and take the expected value. This square is the first term square. So this is bias, this thing, WC, I have parentheses square plus I have expected value of W transpose N times parentheses of this, parentheses square of that, minus two times expected value of, this is the bias term, bias WC, I have W transpose N. Okay, if I take the square of this, but this is equal to zero because noise is zero mean. Okay, so how about this one? I can write this one as we have done similar things before like this. And then after expectation, I get this. So this is bias square plus W transpose R and W. Okay, so this is my MSC then. I have this bias term, this term. Parentheses square, and I have a quadratic form for Rn and weights. Okay, I have something like that. So I would like to minimize this if possible. So this is aimed to be minimized. Okay, let me write a comment. Since C is non-random. Okay. Since C is non-random, MSC contains this expression. The unknown C in the cost function IE MSC expression to be minimized. So how can I, so this is like a shocking news to us, because I have a cost function. This cost function contains a C over here, this C, 
So I'm trying to select this W to minimize this. But you can see that if I take the derivatives with respect to W's over here, then at the end I get a function of C in the optimal equations. But I don't know the value of C. This is the thing that I would like to estimate. Then, optimal, let's say in quotations, values for MSC minimization, optimal values for W, I would like to say, W vector, depends on depends on C. This estimator is an unrealizable estimator. Unrealizable. I cannot realize this estimator because to realize the estimator I need this unknown C. This estimator is an unrealizable estimator. So you see that I'm trying to minimize MSC, but I'm running into difficulties because the optimal estimator depends on the unknown. Okay, so that is the meaning of unrealizable estimator. Well, what should I do? Now, one approaches the following. Well, if bias term is equal to zero, as you see, we are approaching this unbiasedness case. If bias term is equal to zero, then MSC becomes a function of noise covariance matrix. As you see over here. And W vector. Okay? So why not do this? So let's change the MSC. Let's change the optimization problem to let's have the optimization problem as minimize omega this MSC of let's say okay MSC I don't like this such that let me write this minimize expected value of C minus C hat parentheses squared such that um, expected value of C is equal to So this is unbiasedness condition. So this is MSC, obviously. Okay. So I have such a case. So okay. So how about this case? Unbiasedness condition. Well, expected value of then this error should be equal to zero. So expected value of c hat minus c is equal to zero because c is, as you see, non-random. I can move it over there. Is equivalent to for this problem. Let's think. C times 1 minus W transpose times 1 is equal to 0 because this is nothing but this. This is this. Okay. So as you see, this is equal to, then this term is equal to W1 plus W2 in our example is equal to 1. Okay. This part. W1, W2, 1, 1. Okay. 
So this becomes a problem like that. Okay. So if I rewrite this problem, then expected value, then mean MSC with respect to this W such that W1 plus W2 is equal to 1. Weights should be summing up to 1. Okay. Okay, that is good. Then MSE expression, when the bias is equal to zero, it's just this. Then this is equivalent to minimize W transpose Rn W such that these weights should sum up to one. Okay. Because MSE is, as you see, from this part, bias square plus this. So if you check this, now this is bias, how about this? This is the variance term. So this is the variance of E or epsilon, variance of epsilon. So this is expected value of epsilon parentheses square, which is bias. So this is nothing but expected value of x square is equal to mean of x parentheses square plus this, where x is epsilon over here. So I'm minimizing the variance of error, the variance of the error, and I'm assuming that this bias term is equal to zero, this term, this term is equal to zero, and I have seen that for a linear estimator, that is indeed equal to zero when these weights sum up to one. So how can I you know, solve this problem, then the solution? So let me define this. J omega is equal to this plus, not plus, but such that, again, so I want to minimize this. I would like to minimize that. Well, how can I do this? Well, I can define, I will be using Lagrange multipliers. So this is called Lagrangian function. Okay. So this is J omega plus lambda omega 1 minus omega 2 minus 1. Okay. So this is called the Lagrangian function. Actually, this is something very basic. Well, in this form, at least, with equality constraints, it is something very basic knowledge of standard calculus. But if you have inequality constraints, it is a little bit more difficult. OK, right now we are using you know, ordinary calculus results with Lagrange discussions. So what is the deal with this? Now, if I define this Lagrangian function, this becomes unconstrained optimization problem, meaning that I can take the partial derivative of this Lagrangian and equating it to zero for these variables, omega variable and L variable. L variable. But for the sake of simplicity, because I don't want to deal this, with this problem in length. So let's assume that my Rn matrix, matrix is for this problem. Sigma, let me write this. So let me write Rn matrix as okay. So I'm assuming uncorrelated noise with different, possibly different variances. Okay. So then this becomes, with this assumption, just for the sake of simplicity, this is omega 1 square, this, omega 2 square, this, with this assumption. Okay? So let's assume we have something like that. And of course, we will find the most general estimator for this problem later on. This is just to understand this problem. Okay. So if I take the partial derivatives with respect to omega 1, so, sorry, w1, 
I get 2w1 sigma n1 square plus lambda is equal to 0. Now, if I take the derivative with respect to w2 and equate it to 0, is equal to 0. If I take the derivative of this Lagrangian, so this becomes, as I have said, unconstrained optimization problem, and equate it to 0, w1 plus w2 is equal to 1. Okay? I get this. So I have three equations with three unknowns. I will try to solve these equations. So from this first equation, so I get this. Omega, so W1 is equal to minus lambda over 2 times 1 over sigma and 1 square minus 2. and 2 square. So this is just a constant. Okay. So what else do we know? So here is this, here is that, and their sum should be equal to 1. So I can write this one as this. So lambda is an unknown. So omega, okay, I can write both of them. Omega k is proportional to 1 over sigma nk. Well, k take two values only, 1 or 2, but it's proportionality constant because it's just scaled version of you know, there is the same scalar. And when you sum them up, their sum should be equal to 1. Okay? So, at, this is the end of the problem, I guess. So, from here, I get my omega 1s. Sorry. And... My, so I say sometimes omega, sorry, W1 and W2s Indeed, their sum is equal to 1 and they are proportional to this. Of course, if I find lambda, the third variable from this third equation, I get the same result. Okay, I can find that lambda from this third equation also. So I'm using these two equations. I'm done. So there is also a notation. So let me also write this with this. So there is uh, tau, let's say k, is 1 over this. This is called the precision. Precision variable. Okay. So 1 over, so this is uh, reciprocal of variance, 1 over variance, reciprocal of variance. It's also called precision. Okay? Please think about it like noise variance. If noise variance is very small, then this quantity is very large, you have high precision. That's the meaning of that. That observation, something like that. It has high precision. So if you check this, then this one is equal to, well, precision 1, it's proportional to precision values, and this one is equal to precision 2, and it's a little bit easier to see at least, okay? I have such a result. Okay, so let me see, is this the end of this problem? So let me also find this, you know, the optimal value from this one. So we have found the optimal coefficients, then the estimator is... estimator is, this is c hat, w transpose, these two, times this x vector. So I see the following, tau 1, okay, so this is our estimator. And this is what we call this blue estimator, okay? So this is best linear unbiased estimator. So I'm going to ask this over here. Best means minimize. Well, it's linear, obviously. Best linear unbiased estimator. So this is something very practical, as you see. What do I mean by practical? Well, you see, uh, I can estimate maybe these noise variances, and I can always you know, implement a result like that. 
So what else? Now let me also calculate this, you know, the minimum error. Expected value of C minus C hat for this. Let me write blue over here, because in case there is a mistake, this is blue. It is equal to this actually. W transpose R N W well because of this unbiased condition and this is equal to W1 square times this well W1 square times in this example at least sigma n square plus W2 square times this so if I do this so I have squares of this tau1 plus tau2 parentheses square so this is tau1 square plus, this is 1 over tau1, by definition, this is 1 over tau1, plus tau2 square, because I need the square of this, times 1 over tau2, so this cancels this, this cancels that, so you have tau1 plus tau2 divided by tau1 plus tau2 parentheses square, so you have 1 over tau1 plus tau2 as this result. Okay? Or in terms of standard deviation uh, noise variances, 1 over sigma n1 square plus 1 over sigma n2 square. Okay? That is it. So let me write it over here. So this result turns out to be, I'm writing this in black one more time over here, 1 over let me see, 1 over this, okay, I have written this thing one more time over here, and maybe you can remember this, this is like, you know, if you are an electrical engineer, this is parallel resistance combination formula, maybe you can remember it like that, if you wish, okay. So what is the thing that we remember? Parallel combination of these two, assume they are like resistances. The result is smaller than, you know, both of them, okay? The smaller than the minimum of them. So you see that at the end of this, I haven't improved. So this linear combination improves the error because this estimate has a smaller noise variance, let's say, at the output after this estimation process the estimation error variance will be smaller than this one and this one. Okay. So there is an improvement. Furthermore, I am sure that it is unbiased. So I have some good news. So if, let me see. Actually, we have solved a very similar problem like this one. So let me write it over here. Lecture 33, we have solved a very similar problem where C is a random variable. Please check lecture number 23, sorry, 33, I will also put a, you know, short, uh, let's say, link, HTML link at, in the description of this video. So that is the following, you know, C hat linear MMSC is equal to, maybe you can remember this, SNR1 divided by This is first observation. SNR2 divided by this is the second observation, a linear estimator. And we have defined in that case this SNR as the Kate SNR as expected value of C square divided by the Kate noise variance. 
please check your earlier notes. We have defined this SNRK like that. So this is indeed very similar to that, but different. Why it is different? Well, for me, this C is a non-random quantity. So if I apply this, let's say, as it is, I get SNRK as a function of C, unknown C. So clearly, you know, this doesn't make sense as an estimator. But if I know this ensemble, on the, let's say on the ensemble average, so this is the average power of C, you may say, okay, then you can implement this. Okay? So this is an estimator, which is minimizing the MSC, this is not minimizing the MSE, obviously. This is an unbiased estimator that is minimizing only the error variance. But this is the one minimizing MSE. But the problems are a little different. This one is capable of doing this because C is defined as a random variable. Okay? There is a connection and a difference between these two topics. Of course, formulas are quite similar. Okay? So we have a result like that. So what else? Now, this is a motivational example. Now I would like to write the general case. But this general case is an easy extension of this one. Now let me assume the following. X is observation vector m by 1. A is a matrix. Y is n times 1. And I have this n. So I have such an observation system and I'm assuming that m is greater than n. So what do I mean by this? So this is a vector like this. This is a matrix like that. This is a vector like that. Okay, so this is m times n. m times 1. This is x. This is y, this is n. Okay. So this kind of matrices are called tall matrices. Tall, uh, is it tall matrices? Okay. So m is greater than n. Now the issue is the following. I would like to estimate, well, the same setup. So this is the desired vector. Well, this is non-random. Okay. So this is observation vector. Like in the earlier problem. Okay. In the earlier problem, I had only one desired quantity. So this was like a one column matrix. Okay. And this is zero mean uh, zero mean vector with covariance matrix Rn. Okay? So it's the same problem and I have such a case. Now the question is, you know, the same question, the general case. I would like to estimate why from this observation x. So how can I do this? And let me write the setup. Now, estimator. y hat is equal to k times x, a linear estimator. OK. So what's my criteria? Now, I'm writing total MSC. So this is expected value of y minus y hat. Okay? This is my criteria, total MSC. So what do I mean by this? So this is equal to, so y is an n-dimensional vector, 1 to n. So this is yk minus yk hat parenthesis square. Okay? So this y vector is somewhat obvious, but y1 up to yn. And obviously this is similar to defined. y1 hat, yn hat. Okay? 
So this is the reason that we call this total MSC. Well, I need this expectation. Well, you can see that this is the MSC of y minus y, error of the first variable, error of the MSC of the second variable. Is. So this is nothing but MSC of the first variable plus MSC of the second variable plus up to MSC of the nth variable. So this is summation of total MSC, summation of all MSCs, and this is the reason that it's called total MSC. Okay. It's totality, total MSC. So I would like to minimize this. So how can I do this? Again, let me define this error vector. Let's do something similar. Y minus Y hat. Okay. So how can I define this? So I have identity minus Y hat is K times A times Y minus K times N. So this is Y y hat is k times x k is present over here k a y k n k a y k n that is it okay so this is my error again expected value of this error vector this time because i have n of them this is equal to again this term okay so note that, because we have some experience in a similar calculation just a few seconds ago, if this is equal to zero, then clearly y hat is an unbiased estimator, zero matrix. Because if this matrix multiplying y is identically equal to zero, in the previous case, it was 1 minus 1 transpose W, isn't it? It was a very special case. But in this case, if this matrix is equal to 0, this is the reason that I have solved that special case to get some experience into this calculation. So if this is equal to 0, then independent of Y, I have an unbiased estimator. Now, again, if I take this total MSE calculation, so what do I have? Let me call this bias, but this is a vector right now, of K matrix and Y vector. Okay. So, so I have, this is my bias, K matrix and Y vector, but this is a vector right now. So how can I calculate this? Okay, let me be a little bit more patient. This is E transpose E. Am I right? Then this is equal to bias transpose. Okay, this is this. Okay. K, Y. This is bias K, Y. Plus E transpose E. Expected value of this times that K, N transpose kn. There is also cross term, but again cross term is equal to zero because you know this is zero mean. So I'm not writing this cross term anymore. So how can I deal with this? So well this is there is nothing much to do for this one because Later on, we will be focusing on unbiased estimators, and this will be gone. But I want to deal with this term. So the classical trick is this. Please remember that this is just a scalar, because this is total MSE value. It's 5, 6, whatever it is. Okay? Summation of all individual MSEs for all desired non-random variables. So I can write this as trace of, even though this is a scalar, So this trace is not doing anything, as you can imagine. Okay. So traces, summation of the diagonal entries of a matrix. Okay, this is just a summation. So I can always interchange 
expected value and a linear operation, which is trace. This is a classical trick, actually. Once you've seen this once, then you are done. So let me write this trace with the square so that I can see it. Square brackets. So I have something like that. Now, there is a result. Trace of AB is equal to trace of BA. It's a very you know, simple result. It's actually a very well-known result of linear algebra. It's very easy to prove if you write this in summation form and this in summation form, uh, matrix multiplication in summation form, you immediately get the result. But then I can think this as A, this as B, then I can write this is also, this trace is equal to K N N transpose K. Okay? So this is B, this is A. Okay? Now if you take this expected value, so you see RN matrix is present over here. Now again interchange these two, then we will get our final result. So let me write this. This is equal to this bias transpose, this is this vector, times bias plus, this is scalar, times, I have moved this, expect, moved this trace out, trace, expected value in, then k times n, n transpose k expected value. So this is k, Rn k transpose. Okay, so this part is for this. Okay, k Rn k transpose. Is this a scalar? This is a scalar because there is a matrix over here, as you see. I am summing up the diagonal terms. Is this a scalar? Yes. This is a row vector. This is a column vector. This is a scalar. So of course this is equal to this. Okay, I have that. So again, the same issue. So we see, so we see that total MSE depends on y vector, unknown y vector, on unknown y vector, unless bias vector is equal to zero. Okay? If, of course, this is equal to zero, then there is no dependence because you don't see any y over here. Okay? So, that is the issue. So, in the general case, as you see, we are estimating several y's from the observations, but number of the observations is m is larger than the number of desired non-random variables. Okay, so we have more equations than unknowns. So we were at this point, right? So we focus on unbiased case and minimize the total error variance. Not total MSC, because as we have said, this is this time total error variance. Total error variance. If you estimate only one quantity, that is the error variance. If you estimate 50 quantities using this, this is the summation of all error variances which is called total error variance. Then my criteria is this. Now the problem is minimize you know, this k over this k. What is my cost function? Trace of k rn k transpose such that so as you see this problem looks much more complicated than the earlier one. But this 
This is the unbiasedness condition. So unbiasedness. But it is, as you see, the same as the earlier one. I minus k is equal to zero, unbiased estimator. And this is the MSC for unbiased estimator. Okay. So let me see. Where are we? Um, this is over here. Okay. So that is it. Now you can, of course, write this one as I mean, somewhat obvious. K times A is equal to identity. Okay. But please remember that, you know, if A is a square matrix, an invertible matrix, then there is only a unique K doing this, you know, satisfying this equality. But A is a tall matrix, isn't it? A is a matrix like this. I have more equations than unknowns. So you can see that there can be more than one matrix for this case that can be satisfying this equation. Okay? So among those K matrices, my linear combination weights, I'm trying to one, trying to find the one minimizing this. Well, this problem looks much more complicated than the earlier one, but actually, again, this is a separable problem. There are some details like that. What do I mean by separable problem? Because I am optimizing, you know, this Y1 hat using this K matrices. Essentially, the first row of this matrix, if you check this, the first row times X, gives me y1 hat, okay? All of these other rows are not important for the sake of y1 hat. It's just clear. So this is a separable problem because to minimize this estimation error of y1 minus y1 hat, okay, MSC for y1 hat, I am optimizing this entries of this matrix. To minimize the MSC of y2, then I'm optimizing the second row of this. So this is actually a separable problem, very similar to the earlier one, but this is a shorthand form, and basically this combines the total MSC and all of these unconstrained, uh, sorry, all of these unbiased conditions, etc. So do, we can solve this problem again using Lagrange multipliers, but you know, I want to write the final result because you know, the details for our purposes at this point, not important. This is a, also a minimum norm problem. You can, if you have taken E501, this is a classical, it's an indifferent form, unfortunately, but it's a minimum norm problem. So the solution of this, again, I'm not proving this, but this can be proved by, you know, again, with Lagrange multipliers. And if you solve only the first row, actually, of K, the other rows, they have the same form. But at the end, if you combine all of those rows, you get this equation, OK? Well, which is good. So also, let me write this J um, blue base linear unbiased estimator for this K. So this is the MSC of blue. This is trace of K, RN K transpose. Well, K, RN, K transpose for K is equal to this. Okay. I don't want to write this again. So if you insert this K over here, you get trace of K is present over here. Then it multiplies by Rn. Then this Rn cancels. If you take K transpose, then you have actually this. D. 
this is your final result. Okay. So how do I get this result? Insert this expression over here, multiplied by Rn. Insert this expression's transpose over here. So if I take the transpose, this Rn comes over here. This A comes over here. This comes over there. Do that product. There is a cancellation and you get this. Okay. So this is the end of the problem. So actually then my Y blue is K times this K times K, let me write blue if you wish. Base linear unbiased estimator. K blue. Okay. It is equal to this. K blue times X. Okay, this is my new estimator. Okay, very good. So, let me erase this. So as you see, different from random variables, uh, random variable estimation, for the estimation of a non-random variable, why? I have to introduce this unbiasedness in the calculations. So with that one, this is the MSC minimizing solution. So let me like to look at the special cases. Number one, so Rn is equal to sigma n square identity. So noise is white noise. Noise is white. Okay. So what happens to my estimator? Then y blue is equal to this one. A transpose. Let me write this. A transpose. A A transpose Rn for Rn eşittir is equal to sigma n square i. So I have this. So this is a vector. Okay. So what do I have? Now inverse of this matrix is over here. So let me write this. A transpose 1 over sigma n square. And there's an identity matrix, but you know, I'm not writing this identity matrix. So this is A transpose sigma n square. Okay. A transpose Oh, I made a mistake over here. 1 over sigma n square. Okay. So as you see, I can move this out. There will be a cancellation of this and that actually. If I take the inverse, this is equal to a transpose A inverse A transpose. Okay. So this is Y blue times this is X. So I was trying to write this. Estimator. This is times X. This is times X. Okay. So what is this? So this is nothing but Ay is equal to x. Then this is, if you check this, this is the least square solution, isn't it? But, oh, let me write it. Y least square estimate is A transpose A inverse A transpose x. So if I have such an equation system, so you see that this mapping is Nothing but the least square mapping. Okay. So if noise is white, very good news actually, easy to remember. Then blue estimator, blue is the least square estimator or least square solution of you know, A 
y is equal to x equation system. So this is independent of sigma n square i. So independent of sigma n square in Rn is equal to sigma n square i. So you see that the noise variance is not important because noise variance in this calculation cancels out. Actually, we can expect that. Why do we expect that? Because all of these observations are equally noisy in that sense. Okay, they have the same power in that sense. So one of them, you know, does not carry more weight than the other ones. So this is then the least square solution. Okay, this is something that we have seen. Number two. So if R n is not equal to, well, this very general case, not white noise. Okay, if it is not white noise, what can I say? Then, so let me write it over here. So how about this? So in maybe many parts of this course, at least in three or four places, we have discussed the concept of decorrelation. Okay? If this is not white noise, okay, let me go it over here. Now x is equal to observation a y plus n. Am I right? And this has noise covariance Rn, expected value of n and transpose. Okay, Rn. Now how about this? If I apply a you know, whitening operation to both sides, okay, I'm applying this, you know, Rn, this matrix, to the power minus one half. Okay, I can calculate this by LU decomposition, by, you know, eigen decomposition. I know how to calculate that. We have some examples, homeworks on this, etc. But let me see. Then, if I apply whitening, whitening of observation vector, of course I'm whitening the noise component because this is deterministic, there is nothing to do over there. Okay. So let me do this, Rn minus one half times x, Rn minus one half, there is an a, there is y plus Rn minus one half n, isn't it? Now, now clearly this is has the covariance matrix of identity. Am I right? Because this is right now whitened. Very good. That thing has covariance matrix of identity. Then let me introduce this variable. So let me call this x, you know, x, let me say triangle, okay? This is my A triangle times y plus noise triangle. Okay, noise triangle is this. So what do I see? Well, I see the following. Now this is expected value of noise vector with triangle after whitening times noise vector this is identity because you know this is the same condition. Okay, that is this. So this is my A matrix. This is this. This whole thing is my X vector and so on. So what do I see? So after this processing this is my new observation, whitened observation, is equal to a known matrix times unknown vector plus white noise. Okay, white noise. So let me use this, then the least square solution. Then the least square solution should be the blue estimator 
the least square solution on, let's say, this x, because it should be clear, should be the blue estimator on x, isn't it? x is this. So let's verify this. Then y, I'm trying to estimate this. This is the least square. Okay. So A, triangle, transpose. A transpose, this is the observation for this triangle case. Okay, so I'm working on triangle observations with this equation form. I have that. So let me then insert over here. Okay, but this is Okay, y least square from this one. A this A transpose A. So this is A R N minus one half. Okay. A tra A transpose this thumb. This is R N minus one half A. Because this is equal to R N minus one half A. There is an inverse. A transposes Again, this triangle, this form. Rn minus one half. Then I need this x. Rn minus one half x. Okay? So indeed, well, So compare with this, A transpose Rn inverse A inverse. A transpose Rn inverse X. A transpose Rn inverse X is over here, okay? So this is nothing but, we see this blue estimator. But from, let's say X, this is this. So let me write it like that. This is a least square from this. Whitened. This is equal to this. So indeed, the blue estimator is something very simple to remember. Blue estimator is, is the least square estimator after whitening. Okay, please remember this. So, I don't have to even remember this formula. If I have an equation system like that, if noise is not white, then I whiten it. And then, after this whitening operation, this step, I apply this least square solution. I always remember this least square solution, no problems with that. So, I immediately get this blue estimator. Okay, which is good. So, we are happy. So, this is almost like the end. So let's revisit our earlier example. Earlier example. So what was this? I have x vector. This is 1, 1, c plus n1, n2, and rn is sigma n1 square 0, 0, sigma n2 square. Am I right? Okay, I have something like that. Well, so let's apply whitening. So what is this, you know, Rn minus one half matrix. So what is this one? One over sigma n1, zero, zero. One over sigma n2. Okay, well, if I do that, 1 over sigma n1, 1 over sigma n2, times x, so I'm multiplying from left by this matrix, times, well, this matrix times 1, 1. I'm writing, you know, this C, plus this matrix, Just 
just to use this, okay? So what is this? N1, this is equal to N1 divided by sigma N1. N2 random variable is N2 divided by sigma N2. So this matrix is applied on the left. So this is this. So this is my X observation after whitening. Then this matrix times 1, 1 is you know, this vector. This matrix times 1, 1. This vector times C. This matrix times N1, N2 is, well, N1, N2, you get this. Okay. So this is my A triangle, if you wish. So let me find that C then, C. Well, least square or blue, doesn't matter. A transpose A. So let me write this. A transpose A inverse. A transpose X this. Okay. So A transpose A. A transpose times this. Where, where is this x? x is x1 over sigma n1, x2 over sigma n2. This is the end. Okay? So A is this. A transpose is row vector, column vector, A transpose times this is vector after whitening, okay? So what do I have? So I have, well, let me use again this precision notation. This is the precision, one more time. So if I do this, I get tau 1 plus tau 2, which is good times 1. Okay, this bracket is done. This is this. How about this one? This is tau 1 x1 plus tau 2 x2 and we are done. Okay, we get the same estimator. So this is same as before. So this is just an illustration that our special case is indeed the special case of this general case. Okay, one last topic, and we are almost done. Actually, this is somewhat an important topic, even though this is like a simple topic. This gives you further insight on least square solutions and the applications of least square solutions, whitening, etc. Okay, so this is also quite practical. So let me have a comparison with. A comparison with let me linear MMSC estimator. This is also important, especially uh, for the students in telecommunications, because you know similar things immediately come up in communications, in let's say MIMO communications, etc. Okay, multiple input, multiple output communications. Again, the same setup. But assume, you know, y is a zero mean. So I'm assuming that this is like an MMC estimator. So it's a random quantity. Y is a zero mean vector with, you know, expected value. Y, y transposed. Let's work with the real case, Ry. Okay. So as you see, I have some prior information on this y vector. Now, if this is the case, now I want to estimate y hat using this type of an estimator for the real k transpose times x, okay? Do you remember this problem? So we have discussed this in length. This is the linear MMC estimator. So if I have such an estimator, so my goal is again total 
MAC minimization with this estimator, linear estimator. But this is expectation is over you know x and y this time because y is also a random quantity. Okay? So again there is no issue of unbiasedness over here because you know y is a random quantity and and this estimator provided that y is zero mean is always unbiased. So if y is zero mean, you know, then noise is also zero mean. I mean, we always assume zero mean noise. Zero mean noise work with Rn as before. Okay. So what are the issues? Now please remember y hat is equal to well it is this R Y X times R X inverse times X. Okay? So let me write. This is our one of important results, linear MMSC. So what is Rx? Rx is A times Ry times A transpose times Rn plus Rn. Okay? So what is R? I have Rxy over here. Rxy A times Ry. Okay? Then this is equal to R Y X transpose. Okay. Or let's be let's do not need brackets. This is you know this. A times R Y. So X is this from right multiply by Y transpose. A times R Y is over here. These are uncorrelated. Okay. So classical setup. Then what do I have? I have y hat linear MMSE is. So I have transpose of this Ry A transpose, the inverse of this A Ry A transpose Rn inverse. So this is Rx inverse times you know, the input vector x. So this is our linear MMSC estimator. So let me write the blue estimator over here. Let me see. This is equal to Is this correct? I think that is the case. So this is the blue estimator. Now they may look different, but let me proceed this a little bit more. So I think I have it over here. So if I apply there is this result matrix inversion lemma. Unfortunately, you know, this lemma always comes up in these calculations and you have to learn this lemma if you are you know, working in this you know, related fields and so on. So if you apply this matrix inversion lemma, you can also write this y hat linear MMSC. And this is closely related, these expressions with you know, Kalman filtering different forms, okay, information form and etc. So this is then let me write this A transpose R N inverse A R Y inverse A transpose. So I'm not driving this, so I'm just mentioning it. Okay? So by matrix inversion lemma we have we have this result. Okay. This is transpose. Now if you compare this one with this one, so what do we see? So we see the following. If Ry inverse is almost like a zero matrix, so okay, I have to explain how can this be zero, but okay. If this is absent, then 
if this is absent, then this calculation and this calculation, sorry, one more time. If this is absent, then this calculation with inverse over here and this part is identical. Okay? So they are identical. So how can this be equal to zero? Well, you may assume the following. Ry is equal to, you know, these entries of this Ry is very large. Okay. So what do I mean by that? This is, for example, this entry is, you can immediately say, expected value of y3 square. Meaning that this is the variance of y3, isn't it? The third one. Ry, the variance of y3. So we can say that, so as SNR goes to infinity, i.e. desired vector components have much more power than noise, okay? So meaning that this term, let's say that this is approaching infinity, all of these matrix entries are very large. Then they are inverse, maybe you can intuitively see a little bit. Then this inverse will be negligible. So we see the following. So y hat linear MMSE approaches y hat blue, but these are different problems as you see, okay? So this is a random parameter estimation problem. But when the random parameters are very powerful, so high at the high SNR, so this is a non-random parameter estimation problem. These are, let's say, vectors. As, let's say, at high SNR. Okay, so this is also an interesting result. We see that if the desired signal is sufficiently powerful, then you can apply this blue or whitened least square solution instead of this. Even though this is a different problem, but if you know that the signal is much more powerful than you know noise, then you don't need to worry about you know the noise power comparisons and so on. You assume that then this term is like deterministic term. Okay. So the, you may say the prior information about the desired signal becomes less important in this case. If the desired signal is very powerful, this prior information, at the beginning of the experiment, you have some prior information. But if this, at the beginning of the experiment, your information says that the signal is very powerful, then you can apply this blue. Okay, so again, then the MSC, we see, you know, I have mentioned this as a folk theorem at high SNR. Do you remember we had in one of the earlier lectures, I don't remember which one, but this was, uh, I cannot remember the number. As there is a folk theorem, I will write it in the description also, the lecture number. So at high SNR, this linear MMSC becomes asymptotically unbiased and it becomes asymptotically optimal, okay? So this tells us that at high SNR, this is indeed an unbiased, approaching to an unbiased estimator, at least for this problem, for this you know, linear estimation problem. Okay, so that's all I would like to say. So thank you very much. This is our second to the last lecture. So next lecture will be the final lecture of this course. Thank you very much.